The Opio Bit on Me is one of One Piece's best devil fruits out there. Its powers and abilities are crazy, and the fights we've gotten because of that have been top tier. So I figured, let's make Naruto even more overpowered and give him another set of abilities to go along with his massive repertoire of Rasengans. So if this sounds exciting, then grab your popcorn, your full body anime pillow, and let's begin. You failed. What? Naruto would say as he looks at Mizuki asking him if there's anything he can do saying, I gotta become a Genin sensei, I gotta. And Mizuki would turn towards Miz, uh, towards, um, not Mizuki, Mizuki would turn towards Mizuki, no, Mizuki would turn away from Naruto and have this iconic evil grin as he inner monologues and he's like, perfect, this brat can steal the scroll for me and that way I can get exactly what I want. So Mizuki would turn back to Naruto before then telling him, it's okay Naruto, look you failed this test but there is another way to pass as he crumples up the piece of paper and throws it into the garbage can with him missing and Naruto watching that saying, hey Mizuki you want me to pick that up? But Mizuki would look at him and say, never mind that Naruto, look, like I said, there's another way for you to become a Genin, it's very easy Naruto, but I think that you're probably the only one that can do it, so here's the deal. You need, to steal, you need to steal the scroll of sealing to show that you're capable of being a ninja and going on covert missions. Don't get caught and meet me at this location. And Naruto, once he hears this, being as gullible as he is, would immediately trust Mizuki thinking, oh, nothing could possibly go wrong. And he would break into Hiruzen's office where I can see him searching for the scroll but finding nothing. So he would kind of just like creep around the uh the hokage tower where eventually he would find himself in a room now this room would of course have the scroll of sealing inside of it but one thing would happen while naruto grabs it naruto would realize that he is starving realizing that he hadn't eaten anything all day and his stomach was completely going crazy at the moment making so much noise that naruto started thinking that somebody could hear him so immediately looking around he would realize like he, no not realize he would start thinking like is there any food nearby when suddenly boom 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 like it's almost like his eyes and the fruit make contact with each other if the fruit had eyes and naruto turning towards it would rush at this fruit looking at it seeing that it's in a hardship and be like this is weird but he would grab it and because he's so hungry dude basically just takes a big old bite of this thing as he would realize that it is extremely like sour bitter it just tastes horrible it made naruto want to puke and because of that, Naruto started literally choking on it as he would bump into the into the uh, the shelf that was right next to him, making a bit of noise and realizing that, it, that if he keeps overreacting like this, he's probably going to get caught. So he quickly swallows the fruit as it'd be in this moment that Naruto would get a stinging headache feeling and he would fall down onto one knee as he gets up realizing that something innately changed inside of him. And Naruto isn't too sure, but he doesn't have time for that right now. And he would immediately rush towards the direction of the forest where Mizuki was waiting for him. Or where Mizuki would be waiting for him in a couple of minutes, or in an hour actually. And from here, Naruto would go on to read the Scroll of Sealing, learning the multi-shadow clone jutsu just like he does in the original, as eventually Mizuki would end up arriving and would say, Naruto, looks like you were able to do it, hand over the scroll. And Naruto would look at him and be like, hey Mizuki-sensei, like, so does this mean that I'm a Genny now? as Mizuki would smirk being on top of a tree branch and say yeah I'm gonna promote you Naruto grabbing the demon wind shuriken from his pouch as he would throw it at the direction of Naruto and right before that thing could even hit him Naruto would be saved by Iruka sensei who would jump in the way at the last second saying Naruto what are you doing here as Mizuki would say ha, I can't believe you jumped in the way of that demon brat you lost your life for nothing, Iruka, and now I'm going to take that scroll and leave and get big money for sharing these secrets. As Iruka would say, how could you do this to us, Mizuki? But Iruka wouldn't care the less, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't care uh, at all, and he would be like, nah, like I, I could not care less for this village. Like You guys are not it, you know? And so he basically is just like trying to leave. So he would go over towards Naruto, beginning to try to like do something to him, but Naruto, not feeling like getting caught or getting beat up or getting killed by that fact, would immediately run away as fast as he can as Iruka would hold him off and Naruto would stand behind a tree, hyperventilating, thinking to himself that that was close. Mizuki really almost killed him. As from here, we would basically get the scene in which Iruka sensei and Mizuki would both monologue and Naruto would realize that Iruka doesn't hate him. But this whole time, he's actually cared for him. And so... 
Naruto would jump out of hiding right before Ruka sensei would get beat and he would say, hey, don't touch my teacher or I'll kill you. As from here, Mizuki would turn towards the direction of Naruto, laugh in his face, mind you, and Naruto like unconsciously would just literally hold his hand out saying, room, as it would be in this moment that a spherical, like a small like room thing would pop up and Naruto looking towards the direction of Mizuki would then immediately form a bunch of shadow clones and these shadow clones would pull up towards the direction of Mizuki as they would absolutely stomp him. Did the room do anything here? No. Naruto just activated it, but because he was unsure of what he could exactly do with it, Naruto just decided to use his uh, multi-shadow clone jutsu, which he just learned, by the way, from the scroll of ceiling. And um, right after this would happen, Iruka would take Naruto out for some ramen, noting what had happened, saying, Naruto, like, what was that? With Naruto being unsure of what even happened, Iruka would inform Haruzen of what went down, but because both of them were unable to like really, uh, really understand what went down, Naruto just goes home in which he tries to reactivate that strange ability, wondering if it does anything for him. But Naruto realizes quickly that he has a very, very hard time doing so. But once he would finally unveil this ability, Naruto would start like, he would almost have a weird feeling that he knows what this power does almost like he's used it before in another life or something because as we know devil fruits come with wills of their own and stuff like that you know so um it comes with uh laws like previous like way of being and carrying himself and naruto would just kind of sit there and like just literally just sit down on the floor crisscross applesauce style as he would think to himself like what do i do in this room like what does this thing give me access to? And so he starts trying to do a bunch of crazy little powers which do nothing. And eventually Naruto would throw a punch at the air. Or or or, or actually, he, here's here's more accurately. Naruto would begin getting frustrated, being like, ah, this is so frustrating. As Naruto would um go on to like punch at the floor and and like like slam both of his hands on the floor, and the blow wouldn't like actually show itself on the ground like obviously like naruto's hand hand um like the uh his his blow would hit the ground leaving like, a little mark right but the actual force and energy of that wasn't shot there but it was actually shot a couple feet forward and naruto seeing that would realize like yo i punched this spot but this spot right here got hit and naruto realizes he's like Hmm. So he gets like a little can or ramen cup, sets it up in front of him, and Naruto punches at the air, and the punch itself would actually end up hitting the can. Um, and Naruto would be like, "This is awesome!" You know, like freaking out at the fact that he just discovered that he has these insane abilities, mind you. And now Naruto's like, "Okay, okay, uh, what do I do? What do I do?" But since he only has this night, and realizing that he's using the room and wasn't really taking it to note, like. How much this would drain him the second that the room itself would like disappear naruto would fall onto one knee being like ah i'm so tired and realizing like this ability clearly drains his chakra or something like it doesn't feel like it's a chakra because he feels like he still has plenty of it but it's almost like a different energy uh, or source of energy was actually taken away from it and so what naruto would do is go home and take a fat nap as the very next day, Team 7 would be formed and obviously Sakura, Sasuke, Naruto, and Kakashi would be put onto Team 7, where they would have the introductions, followed by, you guessed it, the bell test. Now, during the bell test, here's where Naruto's finally going to be able to sort of show a glimpse of this ability. Now, he would be able to shock Kakashi using this power as he would still definitely do that thing where Kakashi's counting down is like 3 two and naruto like not wanting to wait would just like rush in at kakashi be like room as like he rushes in and kakashi sees this like blue orb appear around him as naruto from here would like literally punch before he's even getting close to kakashi but kakashi wouldn't like see this coming so kakashi would straight get punched and would actually be sent knocked onto the floor as naruto would like stand above kakashi and begin laughing be like ha look at that i was able to punch a genin uh, i mean a jonin looks like i i'm already powerful enough to become okage as you know kakashi would get up look at naruto and wonder what in the world that was before then absolutely obliterating naruto and sending him back a couple of pegs in terms of how overconfident he was right following this 
Naruto would then try to use his ability again, but now that Kakashi sort of saw saw it once and kind of understands how it works, he was able to like predict, not give Naruto a single chance to use this weird ability and remain outside of the bubble, using long range attacks so that Naruto's abilities wouldn't affect him. And so eventually Naruto would end up being tied to the stump where Sasuke and Sakura would both end up feeding Naruto, making them both pass and eventually leading us to two weeks worth of d-rank missions this is where they're first gonna start like creating chemistry where they're gonna start bonding and all that stuff but nothing really happens considering that this section of time was mainly glossed over by kishimoto so i think that i'm gonna do the same and during the two weeks that naruto has off every single day after naruto was done with his d-rank missions naruto would go home and train endlessly working on this ability so that he can have it activated for longer periods of times specifically for that and also work on different combinations attacks when it comes to like punching something and something actually getting hit that isn't like there but naruto realizes that, that is not the best use for it like punch is cool whatever that's kind of whack naruto did find one thing out that was very very useful for him and that is that naruto could actually like use shuriken uh, and and kunai's which are the things that he has in his pouch right and he can throw them and like they'll hit their target like if naruto throws them and like let's say he's off by a little bit naruto could use his ability to shift the position of it and move it inside of the like he could move the objects inside of his room and like uh kind of like wandu or yandu yandu is like arrow he can like whoo and make like the the kunai like fly in different directions and that's exactly what naruto would learn to do with one of his first abilities that he would have with room which is definitely something that i think law can do something that he hasn't done in the series but something that because there's the potential to do it i'm gonna give it to naruto and naruto isn't exactly gonna be getting every ability that law has because they're two different people i think that every single different person when they gain access to a devil fruit is going to use it differently unless it's a very generic ability but with something like the opio open on me we can't exactly expect naruto to just be a play paste and copy and paste version of law right we have to add a little bit of pizzazz on there you get what i'm saying so yeah that's where we're at for now and now we can focus on way more important things like the land of the waves arc beginning with the land of the waves arc i think that the beginning stages of this are not going to be changing which means like naruto's begging and like whining for a c rank mission still goes by the same tazuna's judging of the team seven and basically making fun of them saying the short one with the dumb face as naruto laughs at sasuke and he's like wait i'm the short one so that still goes down just like in the original and also another thing that still goes down just like in the original is their encounter with the demon brothers considering that naruto's new abilities doesn't mean that he has actual experience on the battlefield naruto still freezes up and you can't really blame him room or no room he's still going to be scared and so sasuke's still able to look at him and be like you scared scaredy cat as from here, we would eventually get to further along in the mission, I would say about uh, three hours, give or take. And once they're more forwarded in the mission, eventually a thick, thick mist would cover. And we all know that that's really just Zabuza. So Zabuza would eventually make his presence known as Kakashi would sense something coming. And he would be like, everybody dodge as everybody would duck. And this gigantic blade would come swooshing by them, uh, embedding itself on like this thick piece of wood as Zabuza would finally make his presence known standing on top of his blade as he would say Kakashi of the Sharingan and we get that same encounter that we get in the original as eventually Kakashi would be trapped in the water prison jutsu and it would be up to Sasuke and Naruto to save him where here something changes because if you guys don't remember in the original version Naruto and Sasuke look at each other realizing that they can't just leave Kakashi here would actually end up formulating a plan in which two shurikens were thrown where it really looked like one but it was two Naruto was one of those shurikens using the transformation jutsu which by the way why don't people use the transformation jutsu more often like seriously it had so much potential could you imagine like getting being about to be hit transforming into like a very like solid hard object and then that person hits you and like 
bam, like they break their fingers or something. Like I would think that that would be like a very cool use. And you would almost imagine Naruto having figured something crazy out like that with his goofy and knuckleheaded hyperactive ninja title, right? But yeah, anyways, Naruto would be thrown in the shuriken and just like in the original, Naruto, once he would pop out of it and like undo the transformation jutsu, would throw a kunai at the direction of Zabuza. And since Zabuza was unable to dodge, it would uh it would cause him to lose contact with the water prison jutsu and ultimately kakashi was easily able to break out unfortunately for naruto however naruto here is going to be finding out one thing that is going to be very important for the series he can't swim the second that naruto would hit the water naruto would begin drowning instantly sinking and not coming up and sasuke realizing this would be like that fool why didn't he tell me he couldn't swim so he would immediately jump into the water saving naruto as kakashi would end up actually beating zabuza just like in the original and we would cut to naruto's point of view as he's just like <coughs> thanks sasuke and sasuke would make fun of him calling him a loser with naruto saying that he's not sure why but he couldn't swim at all he he doesn't understand it but sasuke would say if it is what it is naruto some people just don't know how to swim just learn so naruto would be like very embarrassed like i do know how to swim like i've swam before because we know that naruto can swim because in one of the flashbacks sasuke uh or no this isn't an original flashback but i think it is a flashback in a filler do you guys remember the filler in which naruto uh, minato survived kushina survived um and naruto grew up in the village like he was strong he was the son of the fourth sasuke was like really jealous of his power wanted to beat him so he left the village and sasuke basically ends up telling naruto like i i always envied you like yada 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 like you jumped into action when i couldn't and then there's like that flashback where naruto like saves a puppy in like a river and um you know like no one else jumped in because it was too dangerous but naruto did it right so it would it makes no sense to naruto because he knows he's a good swimmer and even sasuke knows so he's like kind of confused but naruto doesn't say anything about it and just realizes that he didn't not only he didn't not only lack the ability to swim but he felt like he couldn't like it felt like he lost his like abilities to do anything when he was submerged in that water and naruto's unsure why but he has a theory that that might be one of his weaknesses now for some reason bodies of water like give him a weird aura now and naruto has been completely unsure of why not bothering to get near them because like i mean who would but in this specific scenario the land of the waves arc this is potentially going to be one of the most dangerous places for naruto to be at but i digress they eventually end up making their way back towards tazuna's hut or not not hut he's actually uh, he has a pretty decent house they make their way back to tazuna's house where inari would be introduced he does his bratty things naruto calls him out on that stuff nothing really changes there and not only does nothing change there but um nothing changes well actually that's not true because naruto would definitely train during the week that it takes kakashi to recover and i can see him mainly training on his um on his devil fruit abilities however he would also try to swim realizing that he literally cannot like that is absolutely shocking for naruto because like i said he used to be a phenomenal swimmer and now he can't do it for his life so he works on basically expanding the range and also working on set attacks that i told you guys about uh with him like doing the punches and like throwing kunais and having them like do all that crazy stuff like naruto's abilities that he has for now are like not as broad as you could imagine because his imagination hasn't like increased as much so naruto didn't have too many access to too many abilities but we'll get there as the series goes on this is going to be more of those stories of like he gets stronger every arc not he's immediately strong off rip destroys everybody that'll come later like torch putin probably or maybe like halfway towards Shippuden. who knows anyways um after this would end up going down naruto would just train with sasuke once uh kakashi would wake up on uh, tree walking and the only thing that naruto was able to really work on was increasing the size of the uh of the room that he can create and his stamina and stuff like that also a little bit of working on taijutsu and things of that sort so yeah 
that's the only thing that was going to be going down and eventually we would get the day of the uh the bridge fight right where haku and zabuza would attack team seven but just like in the original naruto overslept due to like insane training the day before and so he would be there to actually save inari and tsunami from the from the bandits that were there to, or not bandits but from uh, gato's men that were there trying to do all this crazy stuff right and after he does that, he would immediately jump into the battlefield where he rushes in right at the direction of Haku and the Ice Mirrors. Once inside, he'd be like, I'm here, Sasuke, don't worry. And Sasuke would call Naruto out saying, are you kidding me? Like you could have been more helpful outside. Why would you come in here? And Naruto realizing this would be like, you're right. You know, like having a little bit of a funny hee hee ha ha moment as um eventually both of them would find themselves with their backs against the wall. And while I wish I could say like, oh, Naruto's like, uh, ope 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 no me abilities actually come into play this battle. Unfortunately, they don't. Haku is just way too fast, way too strong for Naruto. And at this point in the story, without the abilities of the Ninetales, Naruto just wasn't able to do a thing against this character of fighter, this tier of fighter. And Naruto was unable to basically do anything other than create shadow clones. Because even with the room that he created, it's not like he can slow time, like slow Haku down. That's not how the OP OP no Mi works. So, um, yeah, unfortunately for him, he's going to basically be getting hit by Senbon after Senbon after Senbon. And eventually after this would happen and Naruto would continuously attempt to use shadow clones to like defeat Haku, eventually Haku would stop playing with them, realizing that Zabuza probably is going to be needing help and they need to complete this mission one way or the other. Haku would finally get serious, throwing a plethora of Senbon at Naruto, to which Sasuke would jump in the way at the last second and be like, watch out, as he tanks all of the Senbon for Naruto, um, quote unquote, dying, as Naruto would have an insane rage boost, going absolutely nuts to butts in this section, and eventually we would get everything that goes down in canon, just like in the original, right? However, one thing does fortunately change for us. Because Naruto saw the way that Zabuza fought with the sword, Naruto was very keen on seeing that. Because Naruto realized one thing. If his punches can land without actually making real like contact with people, and he can hit people with these kunais and shurikens, surely if Naruto was to slash, he could cut those, he could cut people as well without having to actually hit them. And that would be insanely. Oh, cramp, 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 cramp. Cramp. Oh, cramp. Oh, cramp. Ah, oh, cramp. 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 Ah, oh, cramp. Ah, oh, cramp. Ah. Ah. Post cramp zether here. Yup. Uh, I'm going to leave that part of the video. It's just too funny, too raw. Like, it's it's just genuine. Like, I, I got you by cramp mid recording. Like, what are the odds of that? But yeah, after the entire Land of the Waves arc mission would be done and, and everything would be said, Naruto following the devastation that Zabuza would have inflicted on Gato and all of his men would realize one thing. Zabuza's sword was awesome. And Naruto grabs it, realizing that it is way too heavy. And, Kika and he would turn towards Kakashi asking him if he thinks that it would be a good idea if Naruto incorporated, uh, you know, Kenjutsu, basically using a sword in a fight as kakashi turns to him and says like oh definitely naruto and not to mention with that weird ability of yours to land a hit without contact if you can apply that with a sword naruto look at me you're gonna be broken and naruto will turn towards kakashi and say all right well then it's settled as he grabs zabuza's blade and hauls it to the village where he's like okay I gotta learn how to use this with Kakashi looking at him and being like Naruto you realize you could just probably use a different sword and Naruto's like no I want to honor Zabuza for what he did I judged him the wrong way and he's actually not half bad of a guy and, Zab and Kakashi just like looks at him and he's like well you could always uh smelt it down and create a different sword from the same from the same metal and Naruto looks at Kakashi and he's like oh, you're right so he would immediately make it to the village not even care about like the breaking down the mission I was like Zabuza none of that stuff in the original we also get Naruto bumming into Kanahamaru Kanahamaru is like Naruto's this your girlfriend and like we get that whole scene where they're introduced to the same siblings because of that this time we don't because Naruto was just that excited about going to the weapon place that he literally just ignores Kan Kanahamaru he's like not now Kanahamaru and he's like rushing with this gigantic sword that's taking him everything to carry around with him as he would bring it towards a weaponsmith and I'm gonna say that this weaponsmith shop is owned by Tim Ten I was about to say Tamari but no Ten Ten's family
family because 1010 is this big old like it's, it's very huge on like weapons and stuff like that so i can definitely see naruto going there and uh like being like hey i have this sword can you guys turn it into a different blade and they look at it and they're like what like you mean to tell me this is one of the seven swordsmen of the mist swords and he's like yes like can you do it or no and they look at him and they're like we can do it as naruto's like great well, uh, I need it done before the, uh, well, uh, no, he wouldn't know about the tuning exam. He's like, I need it done as fast as possible. And they would look at him and say, of course. And Arthur's like, how much? And they're like, for this? Uh, nothing. Not like literally not like they don't charge him. They're just that excited to work with this blade as, um, Naruto would just leave. And eventually like before like literally like hours before the tuning exams like day would be selected naruto would finally be able to pick it up because they're telling like hey it's done but um before that uh kakashi would gather the group tell them about the tuning exams and then they would have a week uh preface to uh basically train up and get themselves ready for that and during like the last hour before like naruto was to meet with his team at the uh, at the uh old academy that he used to go to uh i dropped the bottle anyways the old academy that he used to go to naruto would go pick up his sword and be like all right is it ready yet and they would be like it's ready but like this sword is so cool and naruto would look at it and he realizes that it's like a longer sword it's not like a katana but it's like a longer version of a katana it's the same one that law has mind you i also have that sword in my room like i i bought a replica of it so yeah i have that in my room <laughs> i get i i know i know what you're thinking you're jealous but you know like <laughs> i would be jealous too i also have law's hat so you know that's cool too but and and not only that but i also have a light uh, a law figurine that i have on one of my shelves that i have over there so yeah i'm pretty cool or whatever but anyways yeah tuning exams okay nothing's gonna be changing in the first part of the tuning exams until we get to the section where they're actually taking the written test since this is a what if i'm sure you guys don't need me to tell you guys about everything that stays the same so we're gonna be ignoring the whole sasuke versus lee section naruto getting ignored because it's still gonna happen naruto still his personality is still the same these uh, encounters are all gonna go exactly the same so there's nothing here that changes enough for me to like be like okay like let me cover this let me cover that so yeah the only thing that is changing however is going to be this exam section and it's going to be changing a little drastically and we're also going to be getting a little power up for naruto in this specific section right okay so here's what i can definitely see happening naruto would be in the examination room and he's like he's stressing because at this point he still hasn't written anything down and he can look at the clock and he realizes that there's only about five minutes before the final question is going to be asked or you know like that stuff ends up going down and um naruto like literally has nothing on his paper and he's like i what do i do what do i do like if i fail this test not only am i gonna fail but i'm gonna drag the team with me like ah, i can't do this myself like ah you know what i mean like he's freaking out internally just like i was when i was cramping and um naruto in this moment would think to himself like i've been able to move uh kushurikin and things what if i can tell what like what what else can i do and he starts thinking he's like what if there's a way that I can teleport or I can swap papers with someone? That 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 has to be possible, right? Naruto would brainstorm and he's like, okay, okay, like it's worth a shot. So Naruto quietly holds his hand out and goes, room. As it would be in this moment that whoosh, this like blue orb would go around and the proctors are unsure of who created it. So Naruto wasn't caught for cheating, right? But it would be in this moment that Naruto and the person in front of him who has all the answers right, Naruto would immediately, whoosh, as both of the papers would be teleported and switched, and Naruto would like have the biggest smile on his face, like realizing he not only just did it, so now his team isn't gonna be held back because of him, but now Naruto found a new ability that if he gets better at, he can switch himself and people. So Naruto would be thinking about that. He's like, okay, if I switch a small thing, it costs me a bit of energy, but if I switch larger things, it'll probably cost me a bit more. But now he sort of has a feel for what he's doing. So he's gonna be getting better at that as the story progresses. And it's the main thing that's going to be harder for him is probably going to be swapping small things with large objects. So like right now it was easy because it was two objects of the same mass, but it's going to be harder if say he tries to swap himself and like an elephant or something like that, or he tries to swap a kunai and a human because it's too large. Um, it's, it's one small and one large. So it's going to be a lot harder for him to take a lot more energy and finesse for Naruto to be able to do things like that. But for now, we can now jump into the forest section of the tuning exams. And here, I don't see 
anything actually changing unfortunately now obviously orochimaru would end up going after the team and all that stuff but orochimaru is just so strong that naruto's room abilities are absolutely necked by him we saw in the uh in the bell test that even though naruto like had these cool powers now he still was able to land one blow and after that nothing else and that's similar to what i can see happening here naruto would take his sword slash at the air like slash it being like okay this better work and naruto would actually get cut but Oro or Naruto would get cut. No, Orochimaru would get slashed by it. But following that, he would just switch bodies by like regurgitating himself and immediately rush at Naruto um, as Naruto would like freak out about this, like trying to like create space, like move out of the way. And eventually like Orochimaru would send him flying, crashing into a tree, dang near making him unconscious. As Naruto like slightly conscious would like get angry at Orochimaru and himself mainly. And as he watches as Orochimaru is about to basically kill Sasuke is what he's thinking. Again, boom, the power of the Nine Tails would come alive once more in Naruto and he would do his best to hold Orochimaru off. But eventually Orochimaru would use the five prong seal, seal Naruto, Sasuke gets the curse mark. And then we eventually get the section in which Sakura would protect Sasuke and Naruto leading up to Sasuke going crazy with the power of the curse mark and eventually jumping into the 1v1 battles, right? Now, the 1v1 battles is where things begin to get interesting because in the original, Naruto only beats Kiba because he straight farted in his face and Kiba has a keen sense of smell. So this time, that's absolutely not going to happen. And I can see Naruto starting off the battle by losing, at least decently, trying to use Shadow Clone Jutes, Shadow Clones to just defeat Kiba, but Kiba's just too strong for that stuff. And because these clones are weaker than Naruto, like, and, and as the more clones he produces, the weaker they get, it would be easy for Kiba to take these clones out, which would be like a cool 15. So after that ends up going down, Naruto's like, okay, like I have to figure out another way to beat Kiba. So he thinks about it. He's like, what if... And, and he just starts thinking in his head, he's like, okay, what if I bait? Because uh, at this point, Kiba and Akamaru would both use their uh, beast mimicry. And they started using their fang over fang attack. So Naruto, he pretty much ends up disrespecting Kiba, like saying a bunch of mean things to him. And this would make Akamaru very angry because, you know, like he loves Kiba, right? So Akamaru wouldn't be able to control his anger. And so he would immediately use the, uh, the fang over fang thing which uh with uh with naruto or aiming at naruto right i'm sorry i'm, I'm like literally jumbling up my words because at this moment i'm starting to think about something does kiba actually need akamaru for them both to be able to use the uh the spinning attack thingy majigger or can they do it by themselves uh i forgot but i'm gonna be saying that they can do it by themselves and if they have already and if they're already able to do that then just forget this section so yeah so naruto would basically just bait akamaru to rushing in at him and what naruto would be planning is at the like 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 at the last second naruto would create a room as does like literally like 0.5 seconds before this attack was about to land on naruto naruto would switch places with kiba and kiba would get hit by akamaru using his strongest fang over fang attack right as Kiba would get knocked down onto the floor and Naruto taking advantage of this opportunity would rush in as he immediately lands an Uzumaki kick to Kiba's head knocking him out cold as Akamaru would be there like looking over Kiba just like looking at Naruto angrily since he made him hit uh, Kiba and stuff like that but following this Naruto would be declared the winner and this would eventually lead us to the one month of training arc right uh, where Naruto really has nothing else to do but learn. And over the first week, Naruto would try to get uh, Kakashi to train him and like teach him some things, but Kakashi was ultimately going to be too busy with Sasuke, so he would be stuck with Ebisu Sensei and eventually meet Jiraiya. Dur because of that, during this one month break, Naruto would learn things such as the summoning jutsu and also how to control Kurama Shocker just like he would in the original. Not only that, but Naruto would also be working on his sword skills and Kenjutsu abilities, his power when it comes to the Ope Ope no Mi and expanding it and having more stamina and such and that's about it actually because any more than that would just be more unrealistic honestly and naruto would get decently strong because of that and we would eventually jump into the next battle which is neji versus naruto 
Now mind you, the events with Neji humiliating Hinato still go down, so Naruto was a bone to pick with Neji, and so what would pretty much end up going down is that Naruto would start this battle off by using his slash attacks, like being like, room, being like, I'm gonna beat you, you know what I mean? Like, knowing he can't exactly get close and fight Neji at his own game, he would use his, uh, his slash attacks, but Neji, like, once he gets hit with one and it would, like, start to hurt him a bit, Neji would begin using the rotation thing. So any slash that Naruto threw at Neji would literally just begin getting, um, would begin getting, like, repelled, so, like, Naruto couldn't actually do it. So Naruto in this moment would be like, all right, well, how's this? As he would then proceed to, um, what's it called as he would then proceed to uh create a bunch of shadow clones yeah yeah i just thought of a really cool way to do this so naruto would create a bunch of shadow clones and all of them would take out their blades as they would all aim at naruto and naruto would say you ready and like neji would be like you this is not like this 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 could not be any like more obvious what he's about to do and so naruto from here would go on to um get ready to what's it called like switch places between him and neji but naruto knowing that neji saw him do that already realizes like if he sees me doing this he's probably going to be expecting it this is where i gotta get like like interesting with it so what naruto would do is as all of these clones were about to hit naruto naruto would immediately use his ability and teleport all like all like uh 10 of them like like 10 naruto's in front of neji and since neji was expecting himself to get like teleported somewhere else he didn't have his guard up so when these like 10 naruto like or 15 naruto clones would like be rushing at neji with slashes uh with swords neji wouldn't be fast enough to react and they would cut him into pieces as naruto would then use an ability called shambles right obviously this is a law ability but he would use shambles to essentially cause neji's body to be reassembled in such a weird way that neji was completely unable to fight forcing neji to give up with naruto being declared the winner and following this we would then get the battle between gara versus sasuke just like in the original when gara and sasuke would be facing off sasuke would show levels of speed and taijutsu that are so eerily similar to gara or i mean to lee that it gives gara straight up flashbacks and so he would use the ultimate defense jutsu to not be able to be touched or bothered by sasuke unfortunately for him though sasuke would bust out the chidori and with that ability yeah it's kind of night night for gara or uh, blood blood for gari more specifically because once that happens sasuke would be able to tag gara and the blow would be significant gara will definitely feel this when he wakes up so following this gara just like in the original would absolutely freak out at what just happened to him because he's never been tagged before he's never seen his own blood and um if you know anything about gara in the beginning he had a weird obsession with blood which I'm not really too sure why, but yeah, following this, Gara would begin to leave the arena escaping and eventually we would get the beginning to the Konoha Crush stuff, right? So the Sand Village would begin trying to get down and defeating and killing a bunch of people, but luckily we have Kakashi and Mike Guy there who were having a weird, which is just like the funniest part, like they were literally having a competition to see who can beat more ninjas and like they were like at 60 if I remember, which is just absolutely insane. They both beat like 120 ninjas themselves, which was just like... It, it's it just it doesn't make sense you know but hey that's kakashi and guy for you anyways naruto would give chase to sasuke and gara considering that sasuke would chase after gara so naruto chasing after sasuke making sure that he's safe but in the midst of all that Konkuro would stop him saying that he can't get to gara and so shino would show up and take naruto's place in this battle allowing him to move on he keeps going and eventually tamari would step up saying that naruto can't keep going but this is when Shikamaru would step up and basically hold him off so that Naruto could continue going forward. And it'd be in this moment that Naruto would arrive to the battle right as Gara and Sasuke were about to hit each other with their final attacks. Sasuke had charged up a Chidori and he was like getting tired at this point and he had like one more shot, right? Because he had already used his four Chidori's for the day and this was going to be like his fifth one, I believe, right? So Sasuke was about to charge it up and like hit Gara with it, but Gara was also going to hit him dealing insane damage and in the original not sure if you guys remember but naruto comes in and kicks gara in the face so that sasuke doesn't actually get um get hit by gara because if he would have he would have gotten very very injured but luckily naruto steps up in the way but this time a bit differently because now that he has the ability of room naruto seeing that this was about to take place would create one of the biggest rooms that he has to this point and would swap places with um 
with Sasuke and like this large boulder that he saw. So the second that that would happen, Sasuke would go crashing into a tree, piercing it as this gigantic boulder would get smashed to bits and pieces by Gara, who would turn towards the direction of Naruto, but Sasuke would get up and be like, Naruto, what are you doing? Like, that was my last Chidor and you made me waste it. And Naruto looks at him and he's like, Sasuke, you were about to die. Like, what are you talking about? And in the midst of their arguing, Gara would come in and hit Naruto, sending him flying through a tree as Naruto gets up and would just like, would just look at Sasuke and say, all right, we need to fight this guy together. And Sasuke would say, fine, but don't hold me back as Naruto says, wasn't counting on him. And following this, I can see them both using their tag team's abilities to actually like get Gara anger and anger until eventually he transforms into his gigantic state. And once we get to this point, Naruto's rooms are gonna be ineffective because Gara's scale and kaiju size make it so that Naruto is completely unable to even do anything to Gara because his room just isn't large enough to affect him in his Shukaku like state. So he's able to, so he has to basically resort to his uh, Gamabunta or summoning jutsu, and himself and Sasuke would ride on top of Gamabunta as Gamabunta would transform into the Ninetales just like in the original, and Sasuke would jump in, boom, landing a blow on Gara, waking him up as the two of them would actually be the ones responsible for defeating Gara this time around. As after this would end up going down, we would eventually get the cleanup of the village, meaning Hiruzen dies, um, a bunch of villagers got injured, and a bunch of uh, like actual like properties and buildings would be destroyed because of this crazy attack. Because mind you, it wasn't just a bunch of ninja, but it was also these like gigantic snakes that I'm pretty sure Orochimaru summoned. So yeah, there was a lot of damage, but regardless of that, Eventually, after the cleanup would be over, Jirai would make one thing very clear. He does not have time to play Hokage. So what Naruto would tell the elders is, hey, I can't become the Hokage, but I know somebody who can. And he proposes the idea to essentially go search for Tsunade, saying that that will probably help out their cause so, 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 so much. And that's exactly what we have happen. Naruto and Jiraiya would go off and search for Tsunade. And during this period of time, I could see Jiraiya still trying to teach Naruto the Rasengan. And Naruto struggling a lot to learn this Jutsu, obviously. But since, um... But since Naruto is the way that he is, where, like, he doesn't care, he doesn't give up, Naruto still does learn it by the end of it. But, um... Actually, I, I'm gonna say it takes him a, little, a bit longer because he does want to work on his, uh... His, his own abilities that he he has because he's like oh the Rasengan's cool for like heavy damage but if I can get good with my abilities I can be even stronger you know what I mean so uh yeah Naruto would be working on the Rasengan in his hotel room when suddenly he would hear a knock at the door and he would realize that that's somebody so he's like hold on and he immediately rushes to the door where he would open the door only to be greeted by Kisame and Itachi and upon seeing the both of them, he can just instantly feel this aura coming off of them of they're here for business. So Naruto would be like, okay, I'm not having this. And he like, he's all like, what do you guys want? And Kisame says, you. As from here, Naruto's like, okay, I don't want to be here anymore suddenly. And he like tries to run away. But Kisame would, um, would rush in at Naruto and like would be about to slash at Naruto as Naruto would um would immediately seeing this happen switch places with itachi as naruto rushes out the hallway and kisame's blade would actually connect with itachi who both of them weren't expecting this at all like teleportation and short range teleportation from a genin like what so yeah they weren't expecting it plus if itachi saw that chakra was like brewing up within naruto for him to perform a jutsu he would have been more than equipped to prepare for something crazy to happen but chakra didn't do anything like naruto's chakra flow didn't move change or do anything it stood completely still so itachi was confused how in the world naruto used a jutsu that required zero chakra whatsoever and that's because it wasn't a jutsu and it didn't require chakra it was a devil fruit ability so yeah naruto would run out towards like the hallway and it would be at this point that naruto would bump into sasuke as he would say naruto where's itachi and naruto points towards the room where itachi just got hit and sasuke's like all right He's like, I'm going to kill him. As he rushes in, uh, charging up at Shidori, screaming, Itachi! And Naruto, seeing this happen and, and like live, would just turn towards the direction of Sasuke, being like, Sasuke, what? Like, I, we just got out of there. 
and like Sasuke just doesn't want to hear it because right now he has tunnel vision right so Sasuke is in this moment of just like I want to kill my brother Naruto realizes that that's probably not the best idea and they're both like they're both kind of doing they're, they're both in each other's way essentially so now Naruto has to sit there and watch as Sasuke was about to be basically skewered by one of Kisame's attacks but it'd be in this moment that Itachi would stand back up from the rubble because he get, did get hit by Kisame and would say Kisame lower your blade as Kisame would look towards Itachi and he would say getting soft Itachi what you want to save your younger brother as Itachi would look at him and say not quite in an angry tone as he would turn towards Sasuke and place him under Tsukiyomi be, that way a Sasuke didn't get killed so Itachi literally just saved his life and b Sasuke still pushes him to get stronger by using the Tsukiyomi but unfortunately he does have to take it a bit too far now right as this happened Jiraiya the gallant would arrive because no, right on cue chef's kiss and once he does that jiraiya would end up basically changing the whole scenario of this battle meaning that itachi and kisame they're forced to get out of there luckily for jiraiya actually and right after that would happen naruto and jiraiya would then end up being um like filling each other in on everything that happened with my guy arriving on the scene and taking sasuke back to the village with jiraiya promising to return with tsunade so that he and kakashi could be safe since now both of them were taken out by itachi so now they go off and search for tsunade and just like in the original tsunade would completely bad mouth the hokage saying this about them and that about them and this about them and naruto's just not having it so he would challenge tsunade to a fight they would end up making a wager and she would make one of the worst decisions of her life saying that if naruto can land a single blow on her she would become okage saying that she's only going to use this finger and so what would pretty much end up going down is naruto would put his hands in his pockets right as he would go on and grab a kunai and say all right sounds easy enough but i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna land this attack believe it you know as sunat is like yeah sure whatever kid and jiraiya would just like be watching on the sideline just like knowing that there is no chance in the world that somebody who has never seen naruto's strange abilities is going to be able to react to them for the first time so naruto here's what he would do naruto would throw a kunai towards the direction of tsunade and basically would um <clears throat> would teleport towards the kunai just like minato does like like in 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 the anime like minato throws kunai and just teleports to them because of the flying rising mark that's not what naruto does naruto switches places with the kunai so he doesn't catch the kunai in midair he just directly switches places because he would throw the kunai at, at, at um at uh what's her what's her name tsunade sorry it escaped me for a second he throws the kunai at tsunade and tsunade like easily dodges just by moving her head slightly saying seriously that's it but naruto behind her he would appear he would say nah that's not it this is as he would throw a kick at tsunade and bam kick her in the face as her whole body would like spin and like she would like spit out a bit of blood being angry and drunk she would ball up her fist and punch naruto in the stomach sending him flying straight into a building and leaving a crater there as naruto would have messed around and found out and tsunade would feel bad but she's like ah oh, i guess i let my anger get the best of me right as she would cockily smile and say fine i'll become okage from here we would get the scene in which naruto would end up uh sorry not naruto we would get the scene in which tsunade would end up going to orochimaru and attempt to kill him but kabuto would see right through this ploy and so we would get the final fight that we would get in the original between tsunade jiraiya naruto and kabuto and just like in the original the battle would begin with tsunade versus kabuto with tsunade having her um her tendon sliced in such a way that her movements were all like discombobulated right so naruto seeing as kabuto just did that would be super impressed and he did that with a scalpel knife like that was so cool to naruto and he takes note of that but once tsunade would be like covered in blood by her own blood because like you know like attacks happen um uh naruto would jump in the way 
and to, uh, uh, get, get involved in the fight as he snaps her out of it talks no jutsu's that weakness out of her and then right after this would go on to absolutely dismantle kabuto mind you he still hasn't seen or bore witness to naruto's crazy attacks so naruto using his brand new abilities of just like slashing would would like straight up use the slash attacks on kabuto and would straight up leave him a gigantic slash across his chest as kabuto like had no answer to it and would fall down onto one knee basically losing consciousness from his blood loss and um orochimaru would be forced to retreat with both of them in tandem right where once that would end up going down all of them would end up returning back to the village where sasuke would be healed and the second that he wakes up not uh sasuke chooses violence right basically declaring uh declaring a, a 1v1 fight with naruto and saying that he's here to prove that he's stronger than him and that there's no way that naruto would surpass him but unfortunately for Sasuke, that is just the furthest thing from the case. Naruto has surpassed you. Naruto is better than you. And Naruto's wonky abilities that he's gained thanks to the Ope Ope no Mi are not going to be making anything easy for your life, Sasuke. So Sasuke still loses. Kakashi still talks some sense into him. But unfortunately, when the sound four would arrive, it's just too much temptation for Sasuke to handle. And I can honestly see Sasuke fumbling, folding, and making his way with them. To which Sakura would catch him in the midst of the night and say, Sasuke, take me with you. But he knocks her out, leaves the village anyways, and the same reconnaissance team that we would get in the original would go after Sasuke. As now, we're going to jump cut straight to the actual fight because mind you, I didn't cover the first fight that Naruto and Sasuke had, which was on top of the hospital rooftop because it's not much of a fight. But this next one, with Sasuke getting the amp with the curse mark and all those things, now we can actually have a fair fight, a fight that actually matters, a fight that has like some weight to it. We get the same monologue that we get in the original, but the thing that changes is the beginning of the fight. Sasuke understanding that the last time they fought, he was already way outclassed, would immediately activate his Sharingan, not playing any games, and would go in at Naruto as he's able to completely destroy him. When it comes to speed, and not strength because naruto is, is is kind of a tank not gonna lie so yeah naruto would be getting blitzed and would be getting tagged over and over and over and naruto using his sword would end up landing a couple of blows on sasuke which you know like weren't crazy blows because like once again naruto's not actually trying to kill sasuke he just wants to deal some damage so he would land a couple of sword slashes here and there but ultimately sasuke was able to like get by them and eventually activate the power of the curse mark once this starts happening and sasuke busts this power out the the, the fight would just absolutely change sasuke goes on the offensive heavily begins landing blow after blow after blow on naruto and naruto unfortunately has no answer to it he would eventually teleport out of the direction of a chidori that was about to land on him point blank so he's able to like dodge that attack obviously but right after that naruto would create some space and say you really tried to kill me just now didn't you sasuke with sasuke looking at him with this curse mark 2 state activated saying and what if i did with naruto saying well then i guess i have no choice as suddenly the powers of the nine tails would begin seeping in and one tail would form behind naruto with him saying if he really wants to do this and sasuke saying he does so Naruto in this moment would unsheath his blade, say, room, as this gigantic room would appear. And Naruto would say, you asked for this, Sasuke. And Sasuke says, I know, creating a, a vermilion uh, Chidori and rushing in it, or Onyx Chidori, yeah, Onyx Chidori, and <laughs> like running, rushing at the direction of Naruto as the water itself would crackle and the sound of a thousand birds chirping would be heard. <laughs> you know what i mean as naruto in this moment would just turn towards the direction of sasuke saying that he learned this from uh from watching Tsunade and like asking Tsunade like how to hit like exact points on the body so naruto from here would like thrust his sword in the air and pfft, like it would pierce sasuke in a vital area slowing him down as sasuke winces in pain and suddenly sasuke's like, getting closer and closer and closer and closer and naruto at this point would have uh, one singular kunai begin falling from the sky as Sasuke never noticed it in the battle, but it's falling behind Sasuke. And right before Sasuke was able to land this Shidori, Naruto switch, quickly switches places and bam, lands a Rasengan in the back of Sasuke, knocking him out cold and breaking his rib cage. So when it comes to break every bone in your body, not quite, but breaking significant bones in your body, yeah, Naruto, you hit the dot. So 
After this would end up going down, Naruto looks at Sasuke and realizing that he put him in a very, very bad spot, Naruto throws him over his shoulder and begins rushing him back to the village where he's hoping that he can help Sasuke, he can save him because this was honestly kind of a crazy blow what Naruto did to Sasuke and Sasuke was losing a lot of blood. So now that Sasuke brought, was brought to back to the, uh, back to the, uh, back to the village, Sasuke would be treated and ultimately Naruto would be informed by Tsunade that there is one th complication. Naruto ended up doing something that she just doesn't have the medical know-how to perform and say that 100% certainty he will live. There's like literally a 10% chance that he could die. But Tsunade says that with his abilities, like he, he could potentially use those things to make the surgery a success. So she would walk him through what to do in the medical ninjutsu field and Naruto would be walked through a surgery procedure by Tsunade to actually save Sasuke's life as he would wake up a week later and following this we would get a time skip but this time the time skip that we get in this version of the story is going to be changing a lot because Sasuke stays in the village he ends up training with Kakashi not Orochimaru Sakura stays in the village however she isn't going to be mainly being trained by um actually uh, why not she, Tsunade could have more than one student yeah she's still going to be training under uh, Tsunade but Naruto as well is going to be training under Tsunade and the main thing that he wanted to learn was all those like crazy spots because Naruto realizes in that battle against Sasuke he did something that was quite to his benefit uh, to his benefit he hit a, a vital area and if he can do something like that in a real real fight that could give him the upper hand like a crazy upper hand and learning the anatomy of the body and learning medical ninjutsu could help him be an even better teammate to the team because he can be able to actually heal his teammates on the fly. So Naruto realizing this would be like, okay, like I want to learn how to do this. So he becomes the medical surgeon, uh, a sur uh, the surgeon of death, right? Just like um, Law has the title in One Piece. And um, because of that, Naruto doesn't end up going off on the three-year training time skip with Jiraiya which means that he gets way more powerful this time around. Because obviously Tsunade isn't just gonna teach him a bigger Rasengan and get him a new jacket. Now, obviously Naruto does have a change of drip and his outfit choice is now gonna be the same one that Law has, the exact same one. He's also gonna be having the little funny hat and everything. And um, during the time skip, a couple things happen. Number one, Naruto gets absurdly more powerful because obviously he learns medical ninjutsu. He's able to uh, expand the range of his uh, of his operator room. He's able to uh, learn a couple more abilities such as like the soul swap and like shambles gets so much better in that. Gets so much more precise when it comes to his like pierce attacks, his slash attacks. Gets so much more precise when it comes to like literally healing himself mid battle and all these crazy things. And um, yeah, like all that would end up going down and not only that but one more thing that happens is that team seven builds an insane amount of chemistry over the next three years mind you they're in the village so they're able to go on missions and every time that jiraiya is not focusing on his spy network he would return to the village teaching naruto a couple of things here and there so naruto would be trained by two legendary sonin this time around instead of one and sasuke would be getting most of his training from kakashi which means that He's going to be lacking some of the things that Orochimaru would have taught him, but he's going to gain that back in the fact that he's so much faster and stronger than the Sasuke that we get in the original. Why? Because he has Naruto as a training partner. And I think that having Naruto as a training partner would give him even more motivation and also um, help him like get better when it comes to like missions and stuff. And there would be like close calls in some missions, I guess that we could say that when like Sasuke would learn more power on the battlefield and stuff like that. So yeah, that's exactly what would end up going down as for the time skip to which we now are able to just jump into the actual like first uh, villains of the story, which is going to be Data and Sasori, because mind you, they kidnapped Gara in the uh, in like the first couple of episodes of Shippuden. And before that, we would originally have the bell test to like gauge the power of the team. But considering that they've been a team, and they have insane chemistry. The second that it would be found out that Gara would have been taken by the Akatsuki, Tsunade would send her most trusted squad team seven after them and immediately team seven would get to work going over towards the village hidden in the sand where sakura and naruto would both in tandem heal Konkuro, and eventually they would find themselves in front of the base that datara and sasori were hiding in as sakura would rush at it would, would actually no not rush at it i can see her just kind of standing there like tightening her glove and just being like cha 
like absolutely smashing the, the the rock like creating a bunch of rubble as naruto in this moment immediately would just be like room as he instantly like slashes like forward like a couple of slashes and data and sasori's bodies would be like cut up into little pieces as they get conjoined dip weirdly and sasuke would rush in at them just like shooting a chidori at them a chidori stream which would hit the both of them taking them both out immediately or so we would think because like who's going to be getting up from that and naruto would undo his room which would ultimately return them both to their states of before they were uh uh destroyed and datara would like weakly wake up being like you're not gonna uh, actually that's not true i was gonna say that datara would like wake up and like try using his uh his like suicide like a tactic thing or whatever but honestly i just don't see it happening like i think that datara is gonna be too beat up from that single attack that sasuke actually did manage to land on him so yeah they're both gonna be taken out and the reason that this mission was just that easy is because have you guys ever played a game where you're able to like gain experience and like the and like if you play the game and you get the guns and you like go in and like you're beating the bosses you're like at the same level but if you beat the game and then you do story or, and then you like go back and like fight the bosses or like you do all the side quests before fighting the, the boss like you're just so much stronger than the boss and it's like not even fun anymore that's what happens they did all their side missions before and now the boss the akatsuki is just a joke to them in the original i like sasuke was able to beat Sus datara by himself sakura was able to beat sasori with with the help of lady chiho which is like who even are you but um yeah after that happens lady chiho would still sacrifice herself for gara and because of this we would end up basically getting them jump cutting back to the village where once they're there nothing goes down that is until we end up getting word that he don has killed asuma and once we find this out, Team 7 would be sent as backup alongside Shikamaru as Naruto would sort of like help Shikamaru through his um through his tough times that would happen because of that. And Naruto ending up making his way there would, with the help of Team 7, absolutely destroy Kakazu. As Shikamaru would still end up destroying Hidan just like he does in the original and nothing changes in that aspect. But once they return to the village, Sasuke would definitely be having that re be receiving the crow that he would in the original that itachi would send out to him the one that tells him to meet him at the uh the old uchiha hideout now that means two things that could mean that sasuke's gonna go off by himself alone but i just don't see that happening because sasuke stayed in the village i think that his relationship with sakura would flourish meaning that sasuke and sakura would be an item he's not gonna just be going off and potentially risking death not telling sakura about that number two he's not gonna try to leave the village again like he did before in search of crazy power this time around sasuke cares about his bonds and his friendships so sasuke would turn to naruto and sakura telling them that he wants to go and that you know like like they need a cover for him as naruto and sakura would both instantly be like we're not covering for you we're going with you as they all go towards the direction of the hideout and once they would arrive the first person that they would all meet would be kisame who immediately would be like you can go but your friends they have to stay here but naruto looks at kisame and he's like are you serious and even like sasuke looks at him dumbfounded he's like what do you mean we can't go yes we can as naruto would look at him and like begin laughing as from here he would slash kisame in half and kisame would realize he's still alive he's like what the heck as naruto in this moment would then look at sakura nod and sakura would straight up punch kisame's like half torso out of the room like she straight up punches him so far like away from the area that kisame is just like out of there and he's still breathing like with half of his torso thinking like am i immortal like that nitwit he done but he realizes very quickly he's not and um since his uh torso and his lower body aren't connected uh not too much he could do to them so eventually team seven would arrive and i can see here they could finally step off the gas pedal because they would definitely let sasuke be the one who primarily handles itachi this battle would be way less close sasuke would put up way better of a fight and itachi wouldn't have to sit there and fake like holding back and pretending that he's going all out against sasuke this time he genuinely does have to go all out against sasuke and it would be an incredible fight to watch but unfortunately i can't animate for you guys so just think back to the original fight it was a masterpiece after all and um sasuke would still end up defeating itachi using the ability of kidding 
and ultimately uh, itachi would just be too drained of chakra to continue the battle so once that would happen we eventually find ourselves in a situation where sasuke sakura and naruto are there and all three of them are beginning to get ready to return back to the village because of this obito seeing that they're all together would be like okay well normally i would go after sasuke but because he's not even weakened and all three of them are there i'll just get him later or something like that right so they would return back to the village where once they would arrive naruto finds out that jiraiya died and this would hit naruto as from here naruto would be sent off to learn sage mode and sasuke like hearing this would like feel bad for naruto with the fact that like that happened you know what i mean and um like he's like all right naruto like we'll be here waiting for you you know and naruto was like i have to beat this guy and sasuke's like i know how you feel like we'll help you so now what pretty much what i'm happening is that pain would end up arriving to the village about one week later but because sasuke this time around is in the village i think that he's able to hold pain off just enough with the help of sakura and um they were able to hold pain off just long enough that naruto would be able to arrive there smashing one of the paths of pain using his room and ultimately in tandem with sage mode his crazy abilities he would just absolutely body and not he but they destroy pain like the argument of teamwork though really does work here because they really really have teamwork and all of them are like monsters in their own right sakura is more of like a, a mini monster like a plushy monster you know but naruto and sasuke they're beasts in their own right and they're able to absolutely fodderize obito naruto doesn't even or pain sorry naruto doesn't even have to lose his cool or go into his crazy state that he would have had to go into in the original and this means that the akatsuki leader obito is now like okay so now i don't have sasuke on my side i need to capture the tailed beast like asap so he would be the one that actually ends up going off to take capture killer b and this means that killer b and naruto never have that moment to train together they never have that situation go down so obito still declares the war on the five kage and would just teleport out of there sasuke not being there means that rai kage a gets to keep his arm and this would ultimately lead us straight to the war arc section where once we get here sasuke is in on the opposite side trying to figure out what he's gonna do whether he's gonna destroy or not destroy the village because he doesn't end up finding out about those things meaning unfortunately sasuke never gets that mangekyo amp but here's where things get interesting because sasuke isn't going to be on the side of battle where uh we usually were this means that naruto doesn't actually end up running into itachi naruto not running into itachi would mean that naruto never um would mean that uh i'm sorry i'm literally like losing myself naruto not running into itachi uh prior to like the events that happened in the original means he never gets the kodomatsu kami bird naruto never being on turtle island means he never gets kcm1 naruto not being on K turtle island means he never bumps into itachi never bumping into itachi means that he never ends up turning itachi to the good side so the uh undead characters that would like end up basically being like a huge pain in the butt they don't get destroyed by itachi who single-handedly goes over there and defeats them by using that weird like uh, jutsu that he used on kabuto which honestly that section of the story was kind of whack like yes i did like seeing itachi return but eh, like it just wasn't for me it just felt like such a such a butt pull jutsu you know what i mean like eh, it, just, it just didn't it just didn't do it for me you know honest honestly you know that's just my personal opinion but yeah that doesn't do it for me so because itachi doesn't go on the light side the hero team loses because you know obviously itachi is the world's greatest character ever right but no um on a serious note uh this means that sasuke would actually end up probably encountering itachi himself and since itachi never exactly switches over to the light side itachi would just like in the midst of this would tell sasuke the truth as he's like fighting them all out and uh like trying to kill his brother like battle but because Nar uh, sasuke would find out this information sasuke would gain access to the mangekyo a little later than he would in the original but still gain access to the mangekyo nonetheless this does mean that Sasuke would be able to defeat Itachi, now having access to the Mangekyo as well as the curse mark. Oh, actually, no, because I still think that uh, Itachi would... Eh, no, nah, I don't think that Sasuke would have used that much chakra. So, yeah, no, Sasuke still has access to his curse mark power, which is so cool to look at, and a Mangekyo Sharingan. So, that sort of makes up for him not having the eternal one, I guess. Not really, actually. But, yeah, uh, I digress. Because of that, 
we would basically end up jumping into a section in the story where Naruto's basing off against Obito, and here's where things get a little interesting. Because Naruto's strange abilities in tandem with Sasuke and all the things that he can pull out of his butt, all the things that uh, Kakashi has, meaning the Kamui, he's like the perfect counter to Obito, plus my guy being here, we would have a long fought out battle where things are like going back and forth until eventually Sasuke would arrive to the battlefield having defeated Itachi by himself. Um, with his new abilities whipping out the susano and such he would be helping naruto out so much and eventually it would get to a point where naruto would make it so that anytime that obito was about to literally land a blow on one of his teammates naruto would just like use his teleportation ability and would teleport obito and someone else that way they don't get hit and it was just like a cycle of they can't hit obito but obito can't hit them that is until Kamui would be discovered and the link between them both would end up being found out. That means that Obito's identity would be revealed. Kamui would finally have a little bit of a counter. And because of that, I can see Naruto and Sasuke using their teamwork though. And um, actually being able to pull together the victory this time. Mind you, obviously Naruto and Sasuke aren't fast as, as fast as Obito, but because of the circumstances here and because Kurama joined forces with Naruto in the original because of Obito, I see no reason why this doesn't also happen here. So Kurama would end up giving the power of, of that he has access to. Naruto gets his amp. Sasuke is over here going crazy with his curse mark power plus Mangekyo. He's losing his vision mid fight. And eventually this leads to Naruto coming up with the perfect plan. To essentially make it so that he swaps places with um with obito and they would launch a full-scale attack on obito unfortunately though this would fail because their their attacks just wouldn't be able to land because of his kamui abilities so naruto gets one idea hey kakashi send me to the kamui dimension and kakashi would be like are you sure naruto like i don't know how to bring you back and naruto's like do it as from here naruto would then go on to be sent to the kamui dimension where he would basically end up creating the plan that if Obito returns to the Kamui dimension, Naruto's gonna land his strongest attack on him, the one that he's been working on to this point, to basically destroy multiple of Obito's internal organs, Gamma Knife. And that's exactly what would happen. The way that I see this fight going is sort of similar to what happened in One Piece on Omigashima, where La and Kid both, has to, both had to face off against Big Mom with the help of Zoro and like Killer, uh not killer b but killer something right and um all those other things and this is basically what's happening they're all tag teaming obito to this point and it's like it's a very very difficult thing to see happen but it is what basically goes down right because eventually once obito would realize that the outside people are like hitting him with a crazy attack he would kamui back to the kamui dimension where naruto would be there waiting for him basically destroying his internal organs with this insane attack and once obito would teleport back he would have like multiple destroyed organs as sasuke with with the usage of his um of his uh, newfound Amaterasu would shoot it at Obito and he would actually get hit with the flames and Obito would begin getting burnt and he has like no counter to it. So he just straight up is getting hit from all corners, all angles. And Obito would actually get killed like normal Naruto style by a bunch of just crazy attacks, which eventually leads us to the final villain in the story, Madara Uchiha. He would end up arriving to the battlefield and here, he would realize like Obito was 100% killed and he's now left with um, one of two options. Immediately jump into this fight and like probably be sealed because of these guys or try to gain control of the Ten Tails. But unfortunately, Naruto hasn't had the, the Nine Tails thing ripped out of him. So here's what would end up basically taking place. Naruto... Um, uh what, what's it called what's it called? I'm, I'm sorry i'm like literally over here like losing losing track of things because i'm thinking of one thing didn't uh aren't they able to still summon the ten tails with the tailed beast that they had gathered to this point considering that this time around they would have the full eight tails right and um that would mean a couple of things that he might be able to actually jump into the abilities of the ten tails but if he does jump into those powers 
then we sort of get to a situation where okay okay there's two scenarios number one he doesn't tap into it and they absolutely destroy him like way worse or he does tap into it and they still absolutely destroy him using teamwork because my guy is going to tap into the power of the eight gates and my guy and naruto are going to be the big hitters with sasuke and kakashi and naruto using um even his own like teleportation abilities to like help out with the fight and with the truth seeking orbs and stuff like that and ultimately i can see Datara, or sorry not Datara, but Madara being obliterated with Hashirama watching this battle take place being like I wish things could have gone differently friend and Naruto ultimately just standing there like having stopped the eye of the moon plan and the whole reason for this is because of the fact that Naruto and Sasuke had developed such insane teamwork and Naruto has access to these abilities that are just so helpful when it comes to a battle with the character so much stronger than you Naruto is perfect is, is perfect when it comes to assist attacks and that's exactly how it goes down Obito is just overwhelmed by a plethora of ninjas and he just has no answer for it and that ladies and gentlemen is how I see what if Naruto ate the ope ope no mi going down if you guys enjoyed today's video and you guys want more long form content then do me a massive favor or actually well do yourself a favor hit the like bolt hit the like bolt the, the like button because if you don't i'm not dropping another one of these videos because they take a long time to make and uh yeah they just take a long time to make okay so yeah smash the like button absolutely decimate it and go check out my my uh my previous video which is what if nar uh not naruto but what if minato was the leader of the Akatsuki. I'm telling you guys, that has to be one of the best written stories that I've made to date. The editing on that video is top tier. If you guys like um, the Grand Line or uh, Ohara or um, like creators that are along that area where like they're really, really good at editing and like the videos are like fast paced, like Anime Balls Deep or like, uh, um, like, uh, care, like, like things like that you're gonna love that video i'm telling you right now you are going to love it so please check it out like i'm practically begging you guys leave a like on that video leave a comment on that video and if you have checked it out already go rewatch it or something like seriously but um yeah with that out of the way ladies and gentlemen if you, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and this has been your boy zether and i am out peace